little rainy Memorial Day weekend. We needed the showers, didn't we? Amen. God knows what we need. We're praying God to give us some showers of blessings today, amen, at church, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, Paul writing to the Corinthian church this second time here, amen, the first time he's dealing with a lot of the carnality within the church, um, and he deals more with the ministry of the church in the second book than he does the carnality, because once the carnality is out of your life, you can serve the Lord. And that's what we all want to strive for, amen, is to less carnality and more of the will of God and service towards the Lord in our lives, amen. He's, amen, and, and we're going to look at this thing this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, look in verse number 12, amen, 2 Corinthians 10 and verse number 12. What's the first word there? He said, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. So it is never wise to compare yourself among yourselves or among others. The Bible said in verse 13, but we will not boast of things without our measure. But according to the measure of the rule which God had distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. Pay attention to that word reach. And Paul said we're not boasting ourselves among ourselves and comparing ourselves among ourselves, but we're not going to boast among things outside of our measure. But there is a measure with inside the rule and the reach of our lives that we should be concerned about. Verse 14 for we stretch not ourselves beyond measure, as though we reached not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. Paul talking to the Corinthians, he said, we didn't stretch ourselves beyond measure, but we did reach even unto you. And we're not trying to boast about the work that we do, and we're surely not trying to boast on someone else's work, but what God has called us to do. Verse 15 not boasting of things without measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready at our hands. But he that glory. Let him glory in the Lord, for not he that commended himself is approved, but whom the Lord commended. He's speaking about the work of God and the, work and the reach of God and the reach of God's people to do the work of God and getting the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to those around us and beyond us that all glory, verse 17, may be of God and not of us. And that God might look down and commend and be approved with our work for his service. Amen. So let's look at this thought this morning. Amen. Let's pray and ask God to help us as we look into the word of God. Amen. Amen. Tim Moody, how about pray for us, brother? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, help us, Lord. We need you. Amen. In regards to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ in this context, I want to call your attention to two words, verse 13 and verse 14, as we'll find these words. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God had distributed to us, so it's, an, it's a personal thing to us as individuals, a measure to reach even unto you. There's a reach, an outreach, amen. A stretching, look in verse 4. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of Christ. When it's concerning the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we all have a reach that we should reach out for 
to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to preach on this thought this morning, or this question, if you will. What does God think of your reach? Your reach. Paul reached, amen. Uh, uh, other disciples reached, amen. Let me say, first of all, when it comes to our reach and answering this question, what does God think? Because that's what matters, verse number eight. Uh, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. So it's what's God think about our reach in the gospel, amen. Let me say, first of all, amen, the reach of Jesus Christ is what it's all about, amen. Hey, this is the rule or the measure of it all. Hey, how far did God reach? How far did the Lord Jesus Christ reach? He says, we dare not, verse 12, make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves among ourselves. Now, someone might say, well, I reach more than them. Amen. They reach less than me, but we're not to compare ourselves to our reach. We're to compare ourselves to the Lord's reach. Let me ask you a question. How far did Jesus reach? Let me, let me answer the question for you. He reached all the way to heaven, all the way to my, my planet called Earth. Yeah, right. That's how far he reached, amen. How's your reach compared to his? Yeah, right. Hey, not as a how compared to the brother or the sister next to you, but how does it compare to the reach of God, amen. We're not to compare ourselves among ourselves. We're to compare ourselves to the rule, amen. the measuring stick, which is Jesus Christ, amen. Look at this in Job. Hold your place. We'll preach right out of this text here. So hold your place. But look in the book of Job. Job chapter number 9. We're talking about the reach of God. How far did God reach? Amen. Job chapter number 9. Some say the oldest book in our Bible. Amen. This records the oldest things that are written except for the creation in Genesis. But Job chapter number 9. Job here speaking. Look what he says here. As he answered Bildad. Job said in Job 9 verse 29. He said, if I be wicked. You see that, Job 9, 29. Somebody's still turning. I'll let you wait. Amen. If I be wicked, Job 9, 29, why then labor I in vain? I mean, how's your labor? Is it a vain labor? I'm talking about a reach. I'm talking about reaching out to the world with the gospel. He said, if I be wicked, why then, is, why then labor I in vain? Look what he said. If I wash myself with snow water and make my hands never so clean, Yet shalt thou plunge me into the ditch, and mine own clothes shall abhor me. Hey, you know you can't clean yourself up. He said, if I wash myself with snow water, amen. Hey, that come down from heaven of God, amen. Hey, you can't clean yourself up. Hey, God's got to clean you up. Hey, we got a world today, people say, well, I can help God save me. You can't help God save you. If you wash yourself with snow water, amen. If you get dumped in the Jordan River over there in Israel, amen. If you get dumped in a baptismal pool, if you join, join any church in this world, amen, you can't make yourself clean. Look what he says here. Amen. He said, if I wash myself never so clean, yet, verse 31, shall thou plunge me in the ditch, and mine own clothes shall abhor me. For he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him, and we should come together in judgment. Now look at this. Here's what I want you to see, verse 33. Neither is there days man betwixt us. Hey, somebody betwixt us. What is he saying? That they might lay hands upon us both. Right. You know what a daysman is? It's somebody that can lay hands on both. Yeah. Let me illustrate it for you, amen. Hey, Jesus Christ is the days man. Right. You know what the days man can do? He can lay hands on both. He can take the hand of a holy God yeah. and he can take the hand of a wicked sinner, amen. Right. Hey, hey, we can't wash ourselves clean, but thank God the days man, our lawyer, Jesus Christ, he came down to this earth and he grabbed a hold of heaven on one hand and grabbed a hold of a sinner on the other hand and reconciled them to God. Hey, thank God he reached to you and I, amen. Hey, how's your reach when it compares to his? Hey, who can grab a hold of God and bring a sinner to God? Only the Lord himself, amen. Hey, as a day's man betwixt us, amen. He reached to heaven and reached earth. He reconciled us to God. The Bible calls this in the New Testament, not only a daysman in the Old Testament, he calls it a mediator, a go-between, amen. Hey, you know what the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 4? Who will have all men to be saved? Hey, man, God wants everybody to be saved. He's not willing that anybody should perish. Who would have all men to be saved and to come into knowledge of the truth? For there is one God... One God and one mediator, yeah. days man, if you will, between God 
and man. The man Christ Jesus. Who's the mediator? Who can reconcile us to God? It ain't church membership. Thank God for church membership. It ain't good deeds. Thank God for good deeds. It ain't baptismal waters. There's only one that can grab a hold of God and grab a hold of a sinner. The day's man and reconcile us to God. He's the mediator. He's the man Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank God he grabbed a hold of heaven for you and I. He's the mediator. He's the day's man. Amen. He also calls it the advocate. These are Bible terms that try to describe the awesomeness of our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. First Timothy, First John chapter 2, I'll read this one to you. Amen. First Timothy chapter 2, he's the advocate. He's the mediator. He's what the Bible calls a day's man. Hey, I wonder if you ask, ask the average person, hey, you, know, you know what a day's man is? Hey, you want something good to take to work when you go back to work, whether it be Monday or Tuesday, and you want to try to reach out to the world to tell them of the gospel? Hey, maybe open up the, uh, the discussion and say, have you ever heard of a day's man? What do you mean a day's man? The one that can go between you and God. The one that can grab a hold of you in your sinful condition and grab a hold of God with the other hand and pull you to him, amen. He's what the Bible calls the day's man, the mediator, the advocate is what he calls him. Our, our lawyer, he pleads our case. Thank God, hey, we were guilty as sinners condemned to die, but Jesus Christ uh, mounted the mantle of heaven, amen, and pleaded our case to a holy God and said, I shed my blood for them. They called on me and he reconciled us to God. God, amen. The advocate, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's James. That ain't John. Amen. That's another J, ain't it? Let me get over here. 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 1. Y'all probably thinking, what is he reading? Amen. My little children, you see that? These things write I unto you that ye sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate. Amen. We have an attorney. We have an, a, a lawyer. Hey, with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he, he's not only our daysman. He's not only our mediator. He's not only our advocate. He's our propitiation. Look at verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world. Hey, what a God, amen. Hey, for God so loved the world. You're talking about an outreach. You're talking about a reach. You're talking about a stretching beyond measure. Hey, God of heaven brought, grabbed a hold of the earth that he might reconcile them back to God, amen. We're not to compare ourselves among ourselves. How's your reach when it concerned God's reach? Well, I reach more than some. I witness more than others. I hand out more tracts than somebody else. Have you reached as far as he reached? Yeah, right. Hey, have you reached as far as the advocate, the mediator, the day's man? Hey, you want to know how far he reached? Here's a good example. Psalms chapter number 40. The psalmist said, I waited patiently on, upon the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Hey, you know, God, he said, somebody crying. That's what he said. He said he inclined unto me. Yeah, right. Hey, the God of heaven listened out of heaven. Yeah. He inclined unto me and heard my cry. You know what he said? And he, and he brought me up out of a horrible pit. That's how low we were, out of a horrible pit. He reached down in the pit of our sin, the pit of our despair, the pit of our anxiety, the pit of our hopelessness, and reached down and brought us out, amen, and set our feet upon a start, solid rock and established our goings, amen. Hey, many shall see it and praise the Lord. Hey, thank God he reached down in the pit of my sin and brought me out, amen. The songwriter said he brought me out. He reached down for us, amen. He inclined and heard our cry. Hey, don't compare yourselves among yourself. Look at the rule, the stick of, of, of measure, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He reached. Look back in, look back in our text, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Amen. He reached. He stretched beyond measure, amen. Thank God he reached. Thank God he stretched. He reached down to sinful man yeah. in his pit of despair. Hey, let me, let, me, let, me just, let me reach a little bit for a minute, if you will. Hey, maybe you're here one that's in the pit. Hey, you know, not everybody's saved. Right, right. Hey, I mean, not because your name's on the church pew being you're going to heaven. Yeah, right. 
Amen. Maybe you're in the pit of your sin. You've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know what that God of heaven is doing today? He's trying to lean your way. Hey, maybe he's heard your cry lately. Maybe you've been wandering around thinking, man, my life's a mess. Woe is me. And the God of heaven come by today and said, don't worry. I've heard you cry, and I'm extending my hand of mercy to you. And if you'd grab a hold of the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ, he'd reconcile you to God and save you today. You ain't got to go to hell. He reached for you, amen. He's not willing that any should perish. He wants all to come into repentance, amen. God's reaching out his hand, amen, to save your soul. As God reached out his hand, do you know we're to reach out also? Yeah, right. Do you know, you, know, you know practically what we are? We're the extension arm of God. I'll show you this in the Bible. I'm not making this stuff up. He reached for you and I and saved us, and he left us here to reach for him. Right. You know, we can't reconcile him to God with our hand, but you know what I can do? I can... I can, I can reach out God's hand to them. I can point them to the Son of God. And I can say, if you'll grab a hold of the Son of God, amen. It's kind of like Jesus Christ when he arose from the dead. Remember when he rose from the dead? And Thomas doubted whether he was the one. And Thomas said, unless I stick my hands in his wounds, in his hands, and in his side, I won't believe. And Thomas showed up that night service, and the Lord was there, amen. And, and, he, and, he, and he said, Thomas, behold my hands. And he, and he said, reach hither. Reach, son. Hey, stretch out here and grab a hold of this. Amen. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Hey, what a Savior that would reach out his hands and be pierced for you and I and hang on an old rugged cross that we might better reach that hand out to the world. Amen. Hey, we can let a sinner know there's hope for them. That's what he's talking about in this text. Amen. Hey, God reached out. We're not to compare ourselves among ourselves, but we're to take God's reach to the world. Extend the hand of God to this world. I know how it works. Amen. The old saying is, you know whose hand gets bit? The one that reaches out to help. But that don't mean we ought not to reach out. Reach out. We're to reach out. Look in verse 13. For we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which God have distributed to us, a measure to reach unto you, even unto you. Hey, God distributed it to us, and we're to distribute it to others. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, verse 14. You know, God's not asking you to go more than you can go. You know what he calls about? He calls it a reasonable service. It's reasonable that God would reach down to my pit and pull me out of my pit and set my feet on a solid rock and establish my goings and put a song in my mouth to want to reach out and give it to somebody else. That's just a reasonable reaction to somebody that's been brought out. Hey Amen. You know what you want to do? You want to tell everybody about how God delivered you. Hey Amen. Anybody's ever been rescued from any danger, amen, they want to talk about how they were rescued. There's nobody has been rescued more than a sinner from hell. Hey Amen, we were condemned to hell. We were on our way without hope and without God, and the God of glory came by our way. He reached out his hand of mercy and brought me out. Hey, glory be to God. You ought to tell people God's reached out to you. Amen. And the same God that reached out to you can reach out to them. Is that not what that woman at the well did when God reached out to her? Can't you just see the Lord when he came down to the well? and he's conversing with that woman which everybody thought was an outcast like Rahab the harlot, Brother Ted. Hey, thank God God still saves harlots and, and renegades and rebels and hellions, amen. Hey, God's still reaching out, amen. amen. And he reached his hand out to that woman. Come unto me, I'll give you living water that you'll never thirst again. Can't you just see the Lord with his hand outreached? Amen, every way he went, he was reaching out his hand to sinners, amen, trying to reconcile them to God. He reached out and we're to reach out. He said not to stretch ourselves among ourselves. Hey, what I'm preaching to you today, it's not something unreasonable. It is never unreasonable for a saved sinner to want other sinners to be saved also. It's a reasonable thing. He, look back in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 right there. It ain't far, maybe a page or two, depending on how big the font is on your Bible. 2 Corinthians 8, 12, one of the great verses about this principle here. He said, for if there be first a willing mind, are you willing to work for God? 
You say, well, I don't deserve to work for God. Hey, don't none of us deserve God's mercy. But thank God he gives it. He said, I'm not telling you to stretch beyond yourselves. He says, if there be first a willing mind, is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to the have not. Hey, what do you have to stretch out with? They said, well, I can't talk like somebody else can. Okay, can you talk at all? Amen. Anybody got any time want to listen to me talk this morning? Can I tell you about my grand youngins? <laughs> hey, Grandma and Grandpa, can you talk about the grandparent kids? I'm sure you can't talk about the grandkids. Hey, you freshly married couple, can't you talk about your spouse? In a good way until you've been married about a year or two, and then it's a different way. But can you talk? You can still talk, can't you, man? <laughs> Just think the talk ain't the same, right? Anybody got an anniversary coming up? Right here. Can you talk about it, son? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good answer, son. You're getting good eating today, son. Hey, hey, yeah, you can talk about them. Why? Because you love them, amen. Hey, nobody loves you like the Lord Jesus Christ. Can't we talk about him? Can't we tell the world what he can do for them? Hey, the greatest thing that ever happened to us is that God passed by our way, brought us up out of our pit, reached down to us, and reached out to others, amen. Everybody can talk, amen. You can talk about what you love. Maybe the problem is it's like the Bible said in the book of Revelation, we've left our first love. Now we don't speak enough about him. Hey, he just wants you to do what you can. Hey, can, do you reach out to your family? Do you reach out, reach out to your co-workers? I'm, talking, I'm not talking about stretching beyond your measure. That's what he said. He said in verse 14, hey, we stretch not ourselves beyond measure. Is it not a reasonable stretch to reach out to your family that they might be saved? That's surely not beyond measure. That's not asking you to go too far, is it? That's what the Lord's saying. I'm not asking you to go too far. I'm asking you to, uh, I'm asking you to stretch and reach in a reasonable distance, Amen. not beyond your measure. Nobody's asking you to go on the mission field. He said just beyond in your measure. Right. You, can, you can witness your coworkers. Right. Everybody at your job ought to know about Jesus Christ in some way or fashion. Yeah, that's right. As the opportunities arise, hey, your neighborhood, that's reasonable. Nobody asked you to go on the other side of the county or in another state. I'm talking about a reasonable reach. Right. Amen. And we compare it to God's reach, it surely ain't that far, is it? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Just your neighborhood, just your neighbors, just your acquaintances. Yeah, right. Is that not a reasonable reach? Yeah. Hey, to go down to Walmart and do your daily deeds and get your groceries and get your stuff, was well, it not a reasonable thing to reach out to that clerk and say, can I tell you about my Savior? Yeah. I'm not telling you to hold up the line where everybody's mad and want to get out of the line, but they, it don't take long to say a little something. Yeah, right. it, don't, it don't take much effort to have somebody a gospel track and say, when you get a break, hey, let me give you something to read about my Lord, how he can reach out and change your life. Yeah, right. I'm talking about a reasonable reach, Brother Nolan. I'm talking about not beyond your measure. I'm talking about just right around your, your, your friends, your family, your neighbor, your acquaintances. Yeah. Do you know if everybody in here done their part in reaching how many people this congregation could reach? Everybody in here, if you reached out within your reasonable reach, how much the gospel could be spread? It's a reasonable reach. Amen. Especially as far as God reached for you and I. We're to reach and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. We are the extension arm of God. Amen. Reach out and tell them about Jesus' death for their sins. You know what? Hey, this is the Bible principle. Look in chapter 5. Back a little bit further. We're still in the same book of this ministry here. We're talking about a reach. Amen. What does God think of your reach? Not comparing yourselves among yourselves. That's not wise. Some of you have limited your reach by saying, I do more than somebody else. The principle here he started out with this reach is not to compare yourselves among yourself, compare yourself to the rule. Right. And when we compare ourselves to the rule, which is God Almighty, that took the hand of God, took the hand of a sinner, nobody's reached as far as he's reached. Amen. That's the comparison today. You know what? Every one of here, us today ought to leave under conviction to reach further. Amen. You say, I've done some reaching, yeah, but you know what? All of us could reach more. All of us. Don't compare yourselves 
among yourself or among others. Amen. Hey, we're comparing ourselves to the rule, remember? We're to reach. Look, look what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 18. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. There's our daysman, right? There's our mediator, our advocate, our propitiation, and have given to us, look at this, the ministry of what? Reconciliation. You know what God did when he reached to you? He gave you a ministry. You're reading the same book I'm reading. He's talking about, you know that verse says before that, verse 17, therefore if any man, that's what it says in verse 17, look at it. Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Any man. That's everybody to say, right? Any man. And then the next verse says, he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. You know what he gave the ministry of reconciliation to? Any man has been saved. Right. People say, well, that's just the preacher's job. Well, you missed that in the Bible. Hey, it's not just the preacher's job. It's everybody's job. It's everybody that's been reconciled to God's job. Everybody that's a new creature has been given the ministry. Amen. I mean, you might not do it in the, in, the, in the form that I do it, of preaching every Sunday, Wednesday, whatever it might be, but you've got a ministry just like I do to take the gospel to the world. Right. It's everybody's job. God's given us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Look at the next verse there, verse number 19. To wit, here's how he did it, that God was in Christ, reconciling, there it is, the world unto himself. Look at his reach not imputing their trespasses unto them and committing unto us the word of reconciliation. Yeah, right. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. That's the big word. We're ambassadors. You are an ambassador for Christ. The God of glory gave you a job yeah, right. to reach out to the world. Amen. Hey, I'm a, I'm a messenger of God. Yeah, yeah. I've been sent of the Lord. Right. Do you know what the Bible says? There was a man sent from God and his name was John. John the Baptist, he was sent from God. What a great calling to be sent from God to be the forerunner of God. Amen. Amen. Who, wouldn't, who, wouldn't, who, who wouldn't want to be John? He was sent from God. Do you know what? You were sent from God. That's why you need to get the picture, amen. We're not the forerunner, we're not John, but God sent us to be reconciled to the world. Hey, the ministry of reconciliation has been given to us. We're ambassadors for Christ. God's given us the title, the calling, the job to reach out to the world. I like that verse 21. For he who knew no sin, amen, was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God saved us. God reconciled us. Everywhere Jesus went, this is the rule. He reached out his hand. Do you ever try to imagine the stories when you read them? You remember when he, when he, when he, when he, when Nicodemus, that short guy, climbed up the tree? Zacchaeus. I always say Nicodemus. <laughs> Glad y'all paying attention. Do you know it was Zacchaeus? Okay, good job. Preacher didn't know. Zacchaeus, that little guy, he climbed up in that tree. Can you imagine when the Lord came by that day and he said, Today I must abide it. I, don't, I, I just, I just, he, this is just about how he had to do it. I don't think he said, this day I'll abide at your house. I think he went, this day I'll abide at your house. I think he was reaching. I think he was stretching out. You know, you read that all through the Bible, that he stretched forth his hand. When he went down to Tabitha, she was dead, he stretched forth his hand. Amen. When blind Barnabas then was by the wayside, the Bible said he stretched forth his hand. I believe everywhere he went, he was out stretching his hand. Amen. That hand that was going to be put on the cross, he was reaching out. Amen. I believe Nicodemus in John 3, when he showed up at night, God reached forth his hand and said, ye must be born again. He's reaching, reaching out his hand. Hey, what about Peter and John when they came to the temple of prayer in Acts chapter number 3? And they, he, they, this guy that was laying there for looking for alms, he's a beggar. He's wanting money. Right. And Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, but such I have I given to thee. Right. And reaching forth their hand, they realized the work of God's been given to them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Rad Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the Bible said they stretched forth their hand. Right. And they reached out. You know what we do? We're to reach out our hand like our Savior did. Let me tell you about my Savior, how he reached forth his hand to me, and he's reaching forth to you. Amen. Amen. 
Not beyond your measure in your reasonable reach. Yeah, amen. When to reach forth thy hand, just as the Lord did, he took him by the hand. Peter and John took him by the hand. Hey, we're to reach as he reached. Right. But he goes further. Verse 15. Look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Back there. He says, not boasting of things without our measure. Not beyond our reach. That is, of other men's labors. I mean, there's people that's reached out in their area. Let them reach their area. Find you a place to reach. I heard Brother Tim, Tim Ellis say one time, he said, you know what we need to do? We just need to find a, a mess of sinners. Yeah. Right. Find a mess of them. Yeah, right. Find a crowd of them, amen, and try to reach out to them. Yeah, right. Jesus ate with harlots and sinners. Right. Now, he didn't do what they did. He was reaching out to them, amen. Yeah, right. I'm not telling you to indulge in their sinful activity. The Lord never did that. Hey, but we need to find a group to reach out to. Not in other men's labors. Look at this. Look at verse number 15. Not in other men's labors. A measure. That is of other men's labors, but having hope. Look at this. When your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to the abundant rule to preach the gospel in regions beyond you. You know what Paul said? I reach to you. Now you reach beyond you. You know, we're to reach our reasonable reach, but when your faith's increased, you reach a little further. Amen. You go beyond the neighborhood, beyond your acquaintances, amen. Hey, you try to stretch it a little further, beyond your reach, amen, beyond your, your capability, if you will. You go out a little further. You know what people do? When their faith's increased, they reach out further. They get a hold of the mission program. Or maybe they become the missionary. They reach beyond. They go outside the states. They go outside the nation, amen. They're trying to reach the whole world as the Lord Jesus Christ did. Hey, give me a group of people that's been reached by God that want to reach their neighborhood, their Jerusalem, and go reach their Judea and their Samaria and their uttermost parts of the earth. Yeah, right. Stretch out a little further. Yeah, you know what we need? We need our faith increased. Right. Hey, God will stir us up, man. To reach beyond. Amen. When your faith's increased, you'll, you'll reach that you, we may be enlarged of you by, uh, by you according to the rule abundantly. We're to reach further. Amen. How far will you go? You know what I believe we need? We need a Thessalonian reach. You know what a Thessalonian reach is? Let me show it to you. First Thessalonians chapter 1. I'm about close. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. We'll get you out here around lunchtime. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Matter of fact, we got food out there. Stay and eat with us. We'll preach you and feed you. Amen. That's a win-win. We're stretching out our hand of hospitality. Amen. You need to reach beyond you. A Thessalonian reach. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, of chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel. You see that? came not into you in word only. You know what? You know what? Some people, it's just in word. What do you mean just in word? You know, people say, well, I believe in God. Do you know all because you believe don't mean you're saved? You say, well, do what? The devils believe in tremble. All because you got it up here don't make you saved. I mean, who don't believe Jesus Christ come to the world? An atheist? Who don't believe Jesus Christ was God? Hey, man. Hey, hey, it better be in your heart. There better be a new birth. There better be a time where God grabbed a hold of your hand and pulled you out of the pit, amen. Not that you believe. He not in word only. Right? Look at verse number five. He said, For our gospel came not in you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. That's birth into the family of God. Hey, sealed with the Holy Ghost of God, the power of God in the new birth. To as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Full assurance. Look at this. As ye know what manner of men we were among you. Paul reached to the Thessalonians. Now look at this. I'm talking about beyond your reach. Verse number six. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord 
having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. Hey, the people of Thessalonians, they reached out in their region, within their reasonable reach, right? Look, but I'm talking about a further reach. Look at this, verse 8. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad so that we need not to speak anything. You know what they did? They not only went to Macedonia and Achaia, which was a reasonable reach, they stretched beyond their reach. Paul said, so we don't even need to reach because you've already been there. Hey, that's the kind of reach I'm talking about, a Thessalonian reach that not only reaches your immediate acquaintances, but goes beyond that. Look, look, look at verse 9. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you. How did you turn to God from idols to serve the true, serve the living and true God? and to wait for his son from heaven. Boy, ain't he coming by? Whom we raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath of come. Thank God we ain't worried about the wrath, the judgment of hell, the judgment of the tribulation. God's going to deliver the saints. The question is, in all that, what does God think of your reach? We're not comparing ourselves among ourselves. God's the one that commendeth. Right? Look, look. Look, what's the end of it here? 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 10. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 17. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Verse 18, for not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom the Lord commendeth. As the God of heaven looks down today on this congregation, what does he think about your reach? How far are you reaching? Can we all not reach a little further? Hey, I don't believe we're foolish to not believe that this thing's winding up. Now, I'm not trying to predict no dates. I don't know. Lord might come in 100 years from now. But, man, I, I just feel like it's got to be sooner than that. Hey, but if he came in 100 years or he came in the next year, what would God think of your reach? If we're going to get something done, we better get it done now. I believe we need to get back to reaching this world for Jesus Christ. What does he think of your reach? Maybe you're here and you're lost. Listen to me. God's reaching out today. God don't want you to go to hell. God wants you to be saved. And if you'd come to him, the God of heaven would take your hand. If you'd step out by faith, come down this old-fashioned altar, hey, I believe God would grab your hand on the way out the, out, out the pew and grab the hand of Father and bring you back to him. God will reconcile you. God will save you today if you'll come. Amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Maybe they can stream us a little something, play us a little something on the piano, whatever you feel led to do. Give us a little music while heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to give you an opportunity to respond. Maybe you'd like to come today and God's reminded you of how good it is just to be saved. Maybe you'd like to just come on and bow before the Lord and say, God, thank you for reaching to me. Thank you for bringing me out of the horrible pit. Maybe you need to come and be saved today. Maybe you need to come and say, God, give me a greater reach. Give me a greater burden. You reach so far for me. It's the least I can do is reach for you. Hey, you that are saved today, when's the last time you spoke about the Lord to someone? When's the last time you told them about when God saved you? Were sinners going to hell on your watch? Are you reaching? Are you stretching forth? God, help us to reach. God, help us to stretch. Extend that hand to this world with the gospel.
our reach should glorify the Lord. Talk it over with him. May you leave with a greater zeal to reach the world. May we never forget how good it is to be saved. May we never lose our gratitude of God's reach to us. May we never lose a burden for sinners dying without Jesus. Amen. Everyone stand. Amen. If you're not in a hurry and you have no plans already, won't you stay and eat with us? We have plenty of food out there. Amen. We have service tonight at 6. It's our birthday fellowship night. Amen. We'll have some cake and ice cream after service tonight. We'll eat in the morning and the night. Amen. So just come and fellowship with us. Amen. Enjoy some time with God's people. Amen. Hey, grab some tracks. Tell the world about Jesus. If you don't know nothing, tell them what he done for you. Amen. What he can do for them. Amen. Pray that you've done business with the Lord. Amen. All hearts clear. Amen. Let's dismiss in prayer. Danny Ray, how about dismiss this, brother? And ask the blessing on the food if you would.